Hello and welcome to the 2023 Commonwealth Lacrosse League Championship game. Pitting the Henry Clay Blue Devils against the Lexington Catholic Knights. We're playing on Lexington Catholic's home field. Both of these teams won their regions. Lexington Catholic, the CLL South. Henry Clay, the CLL North. Lexington Catholic was a one seed in that tournament and rolled through the competition. Henry Clay was a two seed who took out the two one seeds in their region. We have the anthem. I'm Wesley Brown. I'll be calling the, day, the game today along with Ben Schaefer. Ben Schaefer is an offensive assistant coach at Transylvania University, a three times Commonwealth Lacrosse League champion, and a two time All State selection. He was also a captain of the team at Swarthmore. Coach, what are you thinking about the game today? Well, it's always a fun game to play in. It certainly has a different feel from every other game in the season. As you can see, there are a lot of people here. Uh, it's a beautiful day out, so it should be a really fun game to get up and down. Uh, having played in four of these games, I will say that it doesn't matter what happened in the regular season. Whoever shows up today and controls the ball in the middle of the field will be in a good position to win. So we'll look for these coaches to maybe pull some tricks out of their sleeves, and hopefully we have a good game on our hands. So you played at Henry Clay. You played in four championship games. Who did you play in each of those championship games? My freshman year, we played Dunbar, but sophomore through senior year, it was Henry Clay versus Lex Cath, the matchup that we have today. So it's an old rivalry, and I know Henry Clay wasn't the top seed in their region, but it's great that they won to keep this tradition ongoing. This is a really common matchup here. It did look a little bit unlikely earlier in the season. Henry Clay was good, but they weren't quite at the top. Uh, but they managed to go through a really tough bracket and get back here. Um, we want to thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor today is Apollo Pizza. Apollo Pizza has been the home of handmade Kentucky pizza for over 40 years with locations in Lexington, Richmond, northern Madison County, Berea. And coming this fall to Corbin, they have tons of beers, sandwiches, salads, vegetarian items, and famous breadsticks to please everyone. Also, Landerman Schaus LLP, a law firm with offices in Lexington and Louisville, Kentucky. They provide a wide range of civil litigation services to individuals, businesses, governmental agencies, and organizations. As the fourth largest law firm in Kentucky, they have the resources, knowledge, and experience to undertake even the most complex litigation. We want to thank Smith Nephew, who provide orthopedic and sports medicine implants throughout the state of Kentucky, specializing in robotic knee replacement at the University of Kentucky. Also, David A. Cervoni, the David A. Cervoni Foundation, founded in loving memory of Lexington Catholic lacrosse player David Cervoni. The foundation's mission is to grow the game he loved in central Kentucky by building an indoor lacrosse facility. The foundation will be hosting their first Ironman fundraiser tournament this summer. Visit davidcervoni.org to learn more. Red Rover Dumpster, sick of chasing your tail for a fast 
easy and flexible way to dispose of waste, Red Rover Dumpster is here to help keep your project moving forward. Call or text anytime for easy delivery and pickup. A variety of dumpster sizes from small residential to commercial. Price shop and book online at redroverdumpster.com. Joy Box Lexington. Joy Box Lexington creates gu custom gift boxes for all occasions. A local lacrosse mom started this business in September 2022. Since opening its doors, Joy Box Lexington has delivered boxes to hundreds of college students at the University of Kentucky, Transylvania University, and Eastern Kentucky University. It also serves local elementary, middle, high school students, and the general public. There are so many reasons to celebrate our kids and bring them joy. Check them out at joyboxlexington.com. Bluegrass Land Title. Whether you are purchasing a home or commercial building, Bluegrass Land Title is here to help. With five offices throughout the Bluegrass, they cover the entire state of Kentucky. With nine attorneys and a support staff of over 50 employees, Bluegrass Land Title will make your next closing experience the best possible. When you close with Bluegrass, you're closing with confidence. Clout Lacrosse is growing the game in Central Kentucky. With a focus on youth players, they're currently building an 11U local travel team. Visit cloutlacrosse.com for more information. This broadcast is bought, brought to you by KY Lax News. KY Lax News is the original and leading source for boys high school lacrosse information in Kentucky on Twitter and Instagram. We really do appreciate our sponsors. Without them, this would not be possible. This is our third year doing it. This is uh, really a pretty highly anticipated matchup. You don't often see fan the stands this full for high school lacrosse games in Central Kentucky. Uh, it's a growing and popular sport, but this is a fairly exceptional turnout for this one. Yeah, for lacrosse fans in the bluegrass, this is a great game to showcase. Uh, exactly what the sport of lacrosse is about. So I'm sure some people tuned in, and especially in the stands are those who maybe don't know much about lacrosse, and this is a great one to get a feel for the game and see an excellent matchup. So our starters for Lexington Catholic in goal, we have Ben Pund on defense, Ben's brother Jack Pund, Bennett Williams, and Thomas Patton. At midi, we have Avon Blair, Alex Castle, and at faceoff, Wyatt Minyard. At attack, Josh Harney, Benji Reynolds, and Chaz Bowden. For the Blue Devils, in goal is Silas Castlin. At midi, we have Rohan Savalia, Josh Trammell, Aiden Smith. And we're off and running. It looks like Wyatt Minyard controlled that first faceoff, but he's retreating under pressure from Jonah Brooking on attack. Bennett Williams gives up the ball. Jonah Brooking jo will set up the offense here for, Lex or for Henry Clay. Sorry. Aaron Trammell with the ball. So Jonah got their touch already. We want to quickly, for folks who aren't real familiar with lacrosse, explain what does a touch mean, Coach? So you see that 30-yard line and below and demarcated by those black lines on the sides. That is the restraining box. And in high school ball, the possession does not start until the offensive player gets a touch inside of that zone. Got Brooking working against Bennett Williams. Bennett Williams is one of the best Deep holes in Kentucky, brooking one of the best attackmen. Trammell dodging on Alex Castle. Pun breaks up the pass. And I think Trammell was going for a cross crease look there. It just got batted down by Pun. Williams flings it high in the air, recovers it himself, headed for goal. Shoots, scores! That was a great take there by Bennett Williams. He put his stick side low. I know the goalkeeper will want that one back. But in lacrosse, when a long stick player scores, it always gets the bench juiced. So that's a great start for Lexington Catholic. Hopefully they can leverage that momentum. Facing off, we have Grayson Fahm and Wyatt Minyard again. Face-off violation, ball to the Knights. Alex Castle advances the ball. Errant pass for Josh Harney. Going the other way. Kenny Fulton. 
We have Kenny Fulton, or we have Fulton Kenny on our roster. Need to double check that. So Jonah Brooking came back across from attack to help with the clear there. Jack punned on him aggressively. And the flag is up for a slash. Play will continue after the flag, and Henry Clay will be affording an opportunity to score here. The crowd definitely didn't like that one, but I think it was just a little bit too malicious by Pond there on Brooking. That's a matchup to keep an eye on. We've got Hayden Daw here on Josh Trammell. Trammell serves it up to Ben Pond. Trammell went high to high with that shot, but it's a free possession as there was a flag on the field. So Henry Clay will get the ball right back with a man up opportunity. So Aaron Trammell goes by Josh. I have to be reminded each year. And I know Josh, and I apologize. <laughs> Rohan Savali onto the field for the Devils. Ball and Brooking stick to Savalia. To Griffin Kaler, back to Savalia. Back to Brooking. And down low to Lincoln Rowland whose older brother Parker was a great player for the Blue Devils, who's now at Transylvania. Makes its way around, back to Savalia to Brooking, back to Savalia. Savalia and Kaler playing the hidden ball. Brooking moves it, cross field to Aiden Smith. A lot of touches on the perimeter here. Look for them to work the ball inside. Trammell with the ball again. Into a double. Shot and score. What a great individual effort by Trammell. I thought he could have gotten that shot off sooner, about five seconds earlier. But he's just too big. He just had his way with the Lexington Catholic defense. We have a tied game. It's no secret that Lexcath have been big favorites in this game in light of a resounding victory over Henry Clay during the regular season in which Henry Clay scored just one goal. They've already equaled that total here and they've been playing extremely well lately. So that may be a sign that things may be, are going to be different today. They're certainly battling hard for this ball. Legal procedure. Devil's ball. Connor Road looks like he's going to start up with the ball. Number five, long stick. Works it up to Brooking. Brooking's an attack, but he's sort of a Mr. Do-it-all for the Devils. He rolls it to Kaler. Kaler to Trammell. He's defended by Brody Egbert, LSM which is a long stick midfielder. Oliver King, lefty, had the ball to Trammell, to Smith. Back to King. Down to Brooking. They're certainly taking their time. Back to King. Who's pursued high by Hayden Dawhair. Griffin Kaler now looking at Wyatt Tinker. Errant pass collected by Brooking. Wyatt Tinker is the brother, the twin brother of Tate Tinker. Goal. Jonah Brooking. Brooking liked his matchup there. I think Bennett Williams had a hard time getting over a player there in the middle of the field, serving as an obstruction. Brooking just took his space and went down the alley and stuck that in the low left-hand corner. Brooking's another one of a pair of brothers who played for the same school. I was talking about Wyatt Tinker's brother. Tate Tinker was a great attackman here who's gone on to Woodbury Forest. Uh, Jonah Brooking's brother graduated last year.
We're going to have a trip call there. Yeah, that was a pretty blatant trip. He just caught his feet, ate some dirt. Now this Catholic offense will initiate and settle the offense 6v6. Six six. Looks like we had Luke Bowman on the field. He's headed off. That's Chaz Bowden with the ball. Attackman for Lexington Catholic. That's Nolan Kelly. Finds Josh Harney, who finds Benji Reynolds. Reynolds in. Save Silas Caslin for the Devils. It's Ryan Station with the ball. Knocked loose. Still available. Picked up by Ty Warren Gerritsen. Handed off to Caslin. And now the Devils will be manned down. Two different offensive approaches for these respective teams. It looks like Henry Clay's relying a lot more on 1v1 matchups. As we could see with Brooklyn and Trammell, Catholic seems to be a little bit more scheme driven, looking to find some seams and exploit the, deep, the weaknesses in the Henry Clay defense. Henry Clay's here to play today. They are already much more competitive in this game than they were the first time they met Lexington Catholic. It's good news for everyone. Every lacrosse fan wants to see a good game. Nice catch there by Bowden. Saves the possible turnover. Harney to Reynolds. To Bowden, it's on the ground again. There's a push call. It's Terrell Clark, all-state defenseman for Clay on the push. Harney has it again. Looking for J.C. Sanders, gets away. Terrell Clark gets the ball from Connor Road. Clark had two goals in the semifinal against Sayre and looking to score again. Jack Pund on the chase will get it back to Lexcath. Right there, Pun was closest to the ball on the shot, so that is why possession will go to them. And lacrosse on shots, whether it be the sideline or the end line, the closest player to the ball will retain possession for their team. Station dodging. Moves it to Sanders. Sanders looking to shoot. Castlin with the save again. Castlin. That was an easy save for Castlin. Goalkeepers love those early in a game to get into a rhythm. Castlin finds road for the ultimately relatively early, early easy clear. It is Fulton Kenny, by the way. Sorry about that. Lincoln rolling with the ball. Little push off ball there. Clark. Once again, Bennett Williams. And Jonah Brooking, they've played summer ball together for many, many years, very familiar with one another. Shot. Coach Chernowski is loving these picks up high for Jonah Brooking, getting his hands free, sweeping across the middle of the field. Ball got away from Bowman there. Physical play, they're letting them play, they should. Ryan Station scoops an important ground ball. Harney. 
Scans the defense. Finds Nolan Kelly who gets it on the second try. Reynolds out wide. Defended by Isaiah Goot. Goal. That was just a simple one-two move there. He got the defender's hips opened up and finished in front of the cage about 10 to 12 yards out. Hard save there for the pass limb as it was an off-hip shot. Fahm and Minier to get on the faceoff. We've got Castle and Road near side. Fahm wins it clean. Up to Oliver King. Gets it to Brooking again. Brooking gets it to Josh Trammell. Again, working on Daw Hair. Savalia looking at Jack Pun. Pun's very aggressive on ball. Very aggressive with his stick. Savalia finds Roland. Roland looks for a dodge. Defended again by Bowman. Once again, it's that Brooking Williams matchup. And then back to the Trammell Dawhair. Dawhair a little high there, no call. Letting the boys play here early. King can't catch it, but he corrals it. I think possession will be crucial for Henry Clay. I was at the game in the regular season where it was 17 to one Lex Cath, and they were just controlling the tempo. So Henry Clay will definitely want to retain possession for the majority of this one with no shot clock in high school lacrosse. Savali on the dodge, looking for King, can't find him. Castle. We've got a crease call, it appears. Talk about the crease to folks who don't know. So if you see that black circle around the cage, that is the crease. And just like in hockey, it is to protect the goalie. Offensive players cannot step inside of the crease. And defensive players can step inside as long as they don't have possession of the ball. First quarter ended. With a tie game, I think, are you, are you surprised, Coach? I am surprised. Uh, to be honest, I thought Catholic would have a healthy lead at this point, but it looks like Henry Clay is definitely lively and uh, working to control the tempo here, as I said. Their late season surge continues. Let us thank our sponsors, Apollo Pizza, our presenting sponsor here today. We couldn't do it without Apollo Pizza. Landerman Schaus, a law firm with Lex offices in Lexington and Louisville. Smith Nephew, who specializes in robotic knee replacements at the University of Kentucky. Joybox Lex, no, I'm sorry. There are also one, but I need to mention the David A. Cervoni Foundation. Uh, they are helping to grow the game in central Kentucky and hoping to build an indoor lacrosse facility. Also, Red Rover Dumpster. They can meet all of your dumpster needs. Check them out at redroverdumpsters.com. Also, Joybox Lexington. Bring a little joy to your college student, high school student, or anyone you love with Joybox Lexington. Check them out at joyboxlexington.com. Bluegrass Land Title. Whether you're purchasing a home or commercial building, Bluegrass Land Title is here to help. When you close with Bluegrass, you're closing with confidence. Also, Clout Lacrosse, who are growing the game in Central Kentucky with a focus on youth players. They're currently building an 11U local travel team. Visit KlausLacrosse.com for details. Another face-off. Same two guys. Every face-off so far this game. Fom versus Minyard. Still fighting for it. Still loose. Procedure call. 
One of the clay defenders appeared to leave the box early. Looks like it was Luke Vance, the LSM got a little, there's a snatch. Snatch is where there's a failure to advance call. Fulton Kenny on the restart. Coach, can you explain what a snatch is? We just had a missed catch because of a snatch. So when you're catching a lacrosse ball, it's a lot like catching an egg. You have to have very delicate hands. That mesh and that stick is not as soft as you think it is. So if you're snatching at it, then you won't have as good of a chance of keeping possession of the ball. And another failure to advance back to back. So you have to get it across midfield, but then you also have to get it in the box. Lexcath didn't get the ball in the box, and then Clay failed to get it across midfield. Let's move forward to the LSM Egbert. Egbert pursued by Trammell. Moves it to Bowden. That's a great check. Well there. defensed by Connor Road, number five for the Devils. There's nothing Bowden can do. His teammates set him up for failure with that pass. It was a really well-timed check. Trammell gets the ball easily on the clear and consequently clears it easily. Moves it up to Roland up top. Another flag, or I'm sorry, another whistle. What was the call there, coach? I think that was a crease violation off ball. Ah. Looks like his buddy up by the sideline has his hands up in the air. Must have been him. Carney just gets it across. Road takes a swipe. Vance was on him. Now we have Clark on Harney. Feed inside. That was a good play out of the substitution game with Nolan Kelly, it looks like. Kelly fed J.C. Sanders, number six. Lovely look. I always say it's harder to get an assist than a goal because yep. not only do you have to do your job, you have to count on the next guy. And in lacrosse, they count for the same, just like in hockey. Goals and assists both accumulate for points. So six assists is just as much as six goals on the stat sheet. I'm not sure the kids all believe that, but... <laughs> it's a hard lesson to learn. Yeah. Minyard with another face-off win. Finds Bowden. Vance defending Bowden. Bowden hits Bowman. Hits Reynolds. Wide open, Ryan Station in front. Station just lost his man off ball. I know I'll want that one back. Really good look by Reynolds there. Comes to nothing. Castlin with the ball. Moves it back to Vance. Another issue clearing. That's a dangerous pass, clearing into the middle of the field like that. They want to go on the opposite box side and the sideline closest to us. Brooking to Roland. They were in danger of another failure to advance. Pun moves it to Bennett Williams. Defended by Road. Road dislodges the ball. Nice cause turnover by Road. The goalie has four seconds to get out of the crease after he controls the ball or it's a turnover. Castling got out easily. Kenny to Road. Williams got up high. Um, you're going to have a high cross check there. He moves it to Savalia. We've got a play on. Brooking has a short stick defending him. I think we'll see him look to dodge here. Look for number 45, Bennett Williams, to slide early if Brooking chooses to go here. Wyatt Tinker's eyeing him up. They're going to slow it down. Taylor gets it to Brooking, who still has the short stick tinker on him. They've not adjusted to that. 
Maybe a little surprising. Here comes the double from Thomas Patton. Gets away. Saved by Pund. This chase is irrelevant because Bennett Williams is headed to the box. I would like to see the Henry Clay men up team working inside a little bit. On the last one, they just banged it around the perimeter. There was no real action manipulating the defense. In American lacrosse, most people call this a man up. The Premier Lacrosse League calls it a power play like hockey. My understanding is Canada prefers power play as well. So Clay is man up. Lex Kath is man down, playing six on five. Smith gets it from Savalia, moves it to Brooking, who moves it back to Smith, who moves it back to Savalia. I'm sorry, that's not Brooking, that was Kaler. Nice little wheel action here. Roland moves it up. Savalia finds Kaler. Knocks, knocked down by Hamilton. Well, it's uh, Brody Egbert. Uh, flashing back to another team. Smith to Roland. Tries a dangerous feed. Picked up by Bowman, who's headed the other way. Clark. Cram will run him down. What a hustle uh, there. Bowman throws it away. Fans want a cross check call, I believe, and it looks like they're going to get it. Yeah, they sure will. The ref doing his best Tom Brady impression, just hucking that flag in the air. One of the assistant coaches for Henry Clay told to be quiet. I believe that's Jackson Brooking, Jonah's brother, who we talked about earlier, who uh, is now at Lynn University down in Florida. He was a great player for Henry Clay for quite a few years. So now the Devils will be a man down. <laughs> will kites into the game with a long stick for the Devils. Harney finds Bowden. Back to Harney, back to Bowden. Shot, save Castlin. What a kick save there by Castlin. Fight for the ball. Won by Wes Taylor for the Knights. Finds Sanders. He finds Bowden again. Bowden to Harney. Back to Bowden. Bowden likes it again. Backed up by Ryan Station. Station finds Reynolds, Harney, Boat. Another nice feed, not finished. Station on the back up once again. Bowden, Sanders, Harney, another save by Castlin. Coming up big on this possession. Bowden on the face dodge. And puts it by Castlin. Too many, too many opportunities there. That was a great underneath move by Bowden. Castlin bailed out his defense several times. It was man up, but they were leaving the perimeter unguarded. Had some great saves, but that high bouncer just got by him. The Knights lead at 4-2. Once again, Fom taking on Minyard. Looks like Minyard might have gone early. He did. Fom gets it to Trammell. Trammell gets his touch. Eyes up, Castle. Castle dislocated his kneecap just about a month ago. He sprained his MCL, and he is back. Impressive recovery by him. Roland, Kaler, Smith, Savalia, Brooking, 
Back to Roland. Back to Kaler. Back to Smith. To Kaler. To Roland again. Pretty methodical here. There's that pick once again on Williams. Crowd want to call. They're not going to get it. Bennett Williams headed the other way after Dawhair dislodged the ball. I believe Dawhair is going to play linebacker at UK next year. I actually went to a Lexington Catholic practice to give them some work, and he did the same thing to me. He <laughs> launched me about 10 feet. How to feel? Did not feel great. <laughs> Bloodied up my knee pretty good. Helmet to helmet hit, no call. Interesting. Got number 28, the LSM Luke Vance on the clear. You could hear the plastics snap there on that hit, but the uh, officials decided it wasn't quite enough to call. It looks like they're definitely being lenient here today. I would love to see Trammell go downhill coming out of the box. It's a lot of force to stop, and he is very fast. Brooking against Williams once again. Williams is relentless, and Brooking is too. Rolling with the ball, eyeing up Bowman. Brooking has it back. Brooking looking for a step, rolls back. Back to Roland. Back to Trammell. Guarded by Castle. Pond is switched on to him. Trammell's a good player, but he's a one way street. He wants to go right. And these Lexcath players surely know it. Henry Clay's getting good switches here. I'd like to see them move the ball forward and work it to the backside. It's not too hard for the seasoned Lexington Catholic defense to guard. The official appears to have missed the Henry Clay player behind him, and he's awarded the ball to Lexcath. All right, that was a pretty rough call there. In high school, my reaction probably would have been the same as number 16, but instead of putting up your hands, you just want to play. Garrettson on Bowman, Harney to Station to goal. Yeah, Station's not going to miss him there. He just caught the ball in the middle. Nice high bouncer. Catholic had no chance. It's a beautiful one, two, three play there by Catholic. Henry Clay with the timeout, trailing five to two in the second. I believe we have a 3-0 quarter going here so far after a 2-2 first quarter. It's Lexington Cath has all three goals in the second. Is that is that our sequence of play, Coach? Yes, sir. We want to take a moment to thank our sponsors once again. Apollo Pizza, home of handmade pizza in Kentucky for over 40 years. Landerman Schaus, a law firm with offices in Lexington and Louisville. Smith Nephew, who specialized in robotic knee replacement at the University of Kentucky. The David A. Cervoni Foundation, whose mission is to grow the game in Central Kentucky, hoping to build an indoor lacrosse facility. Red Rover Dumpster, price shop and book online at redroverdumpsters.com for all your dumpster needs. Joybox Lexington, create some joy for anyone in your life who needs some joy. Go to joyboxlexington.com to order. Bluegrass Land Title, when you close with bluegrass, you're closing with confidence. Bluegrass Land Title. And Clout Lacrosse, growing the game in Central Kentucky. Looks like Henry Clay wants to regroup a little bit here after giving up, uh, giving up the lead. Yeah, lacrosse is a game of runs. As soon as you go on a three, four, five goal run, other team will probably want to call a timeout and regroup and discuss how they can stop the momentum. Henry Clay will look to strike back and hopefully go on a run here. We've got a player coming on late, Isaiah Gute to the wing for Henry Clay. He makes it, no delay of game. If he doesn't get there on time, the ball is automatically awarded to the Knights. Minyard wins the faceoff cleanly. Gets everything he wants, Castlin robs him. 
Yeah, probably worst case scenario out of a timeout there, losing a face off and having a fast break forward. Got a player down. They're going to stop play. Got some fans unhappy that they stopped play for the down player. That is the protocol. There was no immediate scoring threat. It was actually worked out to the wing. Now, if that had been headed toward goal, they would not have done that. Wes Taylor up high with the ball. Looking to dodge. Luke Vance. Vance with him. Beautiful lift. Ty Warren Gerritsen. J.C. Sanders. Gets help from Road. Benji Reynolds get free hands. Did a great job there. He used the defender as a screen. Started over his shoulder, so it's hard for Castling to read the trajectory of the stick to potentially make a save. It snuck in there. Henry Clay's not going to want to give up another one before the half or more. This game could get away from him. Bowman picks it up, moves it to Castle. Clark slides, save. Can you explain to folks what a slide is? Yeah, so if you see an offense, usually the team will be spread out along the perimeter and maybe have a couple guys inside, one or two. So that also leaves the defense spread out. So whenever an offensive player beats his man, the defense will respond by sliding, by having the closest or central defenseman move towards the offensive player. We have a failure to advance. Restart. Castle with the long stick still in at the offensive end. Moves it to Bowman. Gets his touch. Timeout Knights. We got 108 to go. Maybe looking to set up a final Final play here. Yeah, if they're able to strike here, a five-goal game going into halftime is a hard deficit to climb back from. Are they going to look for a last shot here, or do you think they're going to try and pump in more than one? You know, knowing Coach Dunn, I would say they'll try to pump in as many as possible, but it's always hard to say. We hope you'll join us at halftime. Don't go anywhere. We have R.J. Kaminsky from the Premier Lacrosse League, an exclusive interview regarding the Premier Lacrosse League's All-Star Game that is going to be held in Louisville, Kentucky, on July 22nd. You're going to find that we're going to talk a little bit about lacrosse in Kentucky. R.J. Kaminsky and the guys coming to Kentucky to play, and we're going to talk about how you can get tickets to the Premier Lacrosse League's. 2023 All-Star Game in Louisville. Don't go away. <laughs> On offense for the Knights, we've got Harney, Sanders, Reynolds, Bowden, Kelly, Taylor. Bowden's going to start with the ball. Coach Dunn is drawing up a play. I don't know if we talked about the coaches. Dan Dunn is the head coach of Lexington Catholic. Ben Ternowski, head coach of Henry Clay. Carney looking for Taylor on the ground. Flags down. Not sure what that one's for. I'm really curious to see what's been called now because I have not seen a penalty. Sanders guarded by Gerritsen. Defended by 
Tucker Sloan, who missed the semifinal, is back here, back out here. That's number 12 for the Devils. Sanders moves the ball low. Gerritsen with the push on Taylor. Nice lift there from Road. Gerritsen, another flag. Benji Reynolds with the ball and his stick. See what these flags are for. All you can ask out of the officiating crew is for them to call it evenly and be consistent with their calls. There's always going to be calls that not everyone likes. That's for sure. And it's a very, very difficult job. I took the training. It was mind-boggling to me. It was very <laughs> challenging, and I didn't even get to the on-field training, and I... I hope to finish it up one day, but I'm not I'm not sure about it. It's, it's a really hard job. I refed intramurals in college and I was quite horrible at it. <laughs> I've refed some youth games where you don't have to be fully uh fully uh I, they were more scrimmages where you don't have to be fully um uh certified necessarily. And I found that very challenging. And the parents were uh more than willing to let you know of their displeasure, even at that level. Will they hold the ball here, take out the faceoff in the second half, Coach? There's only 3.8 left. They're up two men. Yeah, I imagine Coach John is telling them to hold the ball. And they will start with possession in the second half. The first half ends with the Lexington Catholic Knights leading the Henry Clay Blue Devils by a score of 6-2 to two in the 2023 Commonwealth Lacrosse League All-Star, or I'm sorry, Championship Game presented by Apollo Pizza. We hope you'll stay here with us all halftime. We've got another big half of action to go. But now we will be having a little chat with uh, Mr. Kaminsky from the Premier Lacrosse League. This is an exclusive interview that we were very excited to get. RJ Kaminsky joining us here in Kentucky for the PLL All-Star Game. Thanks for being here with us, man. Of course. Thanks for having me, Wes. This is great. Thanks, man. So you got to tell us, what you what you think when you heard Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, PLL 2023 All-Star Game? I was just glad the rumors in the office were true. Usually we like our, our sites are set on a destination location, like in LA, for example, like we did back in 2019, but I love that our ops team took it, uh, took a chance on this year's all-star game to go someplace that not only the PLL hasn't been before, but a lot of our players. Um, so we, we heard that the stars shine a lot brighter down South. So we figured we'd bring it on down to Kentucky and, uh, and give it a whirl and have a, have a glass of whiskey or bur bourbon is the specialty down there. Right. Is that it? Uh, yep. Whiskey distilled in Kentucky is bourbon. In incredible. I know we're going to be, we might be visiting the, uh, the rebel bourbon uh, distillery while we're there too. So we'll, we'll take in some sights and sounds and get the full experience while we're there. You got it, man. You got to take a bourbon tour while you're here. That's a must. Um, so have, have you ever spent any real time in Kentucky or is this going to be something new for you? This will, this will really be a totally new experience for me. I've heard really great things. I have a lot of family and friends that have spent quality time down there. So excited for it to be my first chance to, to really explore the city and what the state has to offer as well as a ton of our players too. I know a lot of them haven't been. It'll be their first times as well. Nice. We're really excited to have you guys here. Uh, so all-star team, it's not picked yet. We'll find out. But who who, who are the highlights, man? Who do you think is going to really light things oh, up in Kentucky? Man, we had Trevor Baptiste and Connor Farrell drafting teams last year. Uh, we, live streamed, we live streamed it on our YouTube. The two went head-to-head. -head. We picked – I think we were in Minneapolis for that weekend. So we'll do it. We'll do it a few weeks out. You'll you'll know where to find it. But it might live on ESPN. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but the the talent, you can rest assured, will be, will be phenomenal. Uh, Trying to think of my favorite 2019 in LA was probably my favorite all-star game. Um, and I think we have a really great chance to one up the jerseys that we did. We went with tie-dye jerseys with our our player social handles on the back in 2019. I think we might one up that with uh with the theme that we roll out uh when we come through Kentucky. 
So is it already picked out? You guys already know the theme. You're just kind of holding it. We're working on it. Yeah, it's it's right. it's a work it's a work in progress between ourselves and Champion. But uh, but what I'm most excited for is the fact that we're coming to Kentucky. We're playing one game, and it's going to be on ESPN. We're not coming through and playing a few games. This is one on the big boy ESPN slot. So fired up to get a lot of visibility around uh, around Louisville as well in the broadcast. It is amazing. To my knowledge, the very first professional lacrosse game ever held in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and it's the all-star game. It's the big one. Yes. I mean, what what better way to showcase the first pro game in Kentucky than, uh, than on ESPN Maine? So you, you're coming in July 22nd, right? What time, What's game time? Game time is 5 p.m. local, I believe. So yep. hopefully we get a nice, we get a nice go. I feel like it'll be, is that golden hour? I'm thinking you're going to get some heavy sun, man. And it's usually pretty warm here. The guys are going to be sweating. You're going to be sweating. But yeah, you, that, you're that, have a that's time. what I was, that's what I was worried about. Maybe we'll get a nice partly cloudy day, some sun shining through, but, but we'll, we'll get enough cover. So we won't be burning the whole time. Nice, man. Well, we are really looking forward to having you here. What, what do you think uh, this means to the PLL to break ground in Kentucky to plant a flag here and have the all-star game in a place like Kentucky where I don't think a lot of people expect it. People don't know that this is becoming a hotbed. It's uh, it's significant. It reminds me when we went to Columbus back in 2019, the outpouring support that we got and the the amount of thank yous that we had from people who were waiting for 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 the PLL to come or pro lacrosse as a whole like the the reason Columbus sticks out to me as a memory is just because those folks were so grateful for us coming to town I imagine it will be no different in Louisville and I'm really excited to hear about the first time lacrosse experiences for fans and friends and family coming out to experience this all-star game because hearing those first time experiences just just brings so much joy to us because we know that we're creating potential new fans of the top stars in our league, as well as the league as a whole. Um, and that, uh, that can bring a ton of memories to come for, uh, for families. And y'all are actually coming back here to Columbus, which isn't far away in June. I suspect we are. See some people who do the double who hit Columbus. We are. I, what, yeah, what's, what's, hit what's the, what's the, what's the commute? What's the commute like? Uh, depending on where you're at in Kentucky, it's, two to three hours to uh, Columbus for a lot of people. Oh, it's man, I, I, I hope we see a lot of folks take the double, take the road trip. Uh, there's going to be a couple from my household who will. Um, love to hear that. Yeah, man. Fantastic. We, we love it. We're so excited. Those tickets aren't available just yet, but go ahead and reach out now. Let's get those links made. Let's get this place sold out. We need it to be PLL All-Star Game 2023 Louisville, Kentucky, sold out, come back, We'll see PLL again. Let's make this happen, y'all. RJ, so awesome, man. Anything you got for the fans? That's it. I just want to say I'm fired up to uh, to see everyone on the ground there. I know ESPN's excited. It's the first time we're going to be on the ground there, as well as a number of our players. And uh, just the fact that we're playing on uh, playing on the big screen and playing on the uh, with the bright lights and the best players in the world, the best of the best players in the world, it's going to be a hell of a Saturday. I'm excited to see y'all. Oh, we are so hyped, man. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Heck yeah. Thank, Thank you, guys. We'll see you very soon. We'll see you in July. Yeah, man. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Peace out. Peace. Get yourself and your family and your friends and people who aren't your friends, too. We've got to sell out this, this all-star game. we got to show the Premier Lacrosse League what we can do here in Kentucky, what the fans are like here in Kentucky. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Hopefully they can actually have a weekend where they have games and not just the All-Star game and Louisville going forward. It's a really exciting moment for the city. I'll be honest, I was a bit surprised. I would think Nashville or Birmingham would be a top choice in the South. So for Louisville to get the bid is fantastic. Really big for the sport here. There's a lot of folks who worked a long time on that and uh, it's amazing that they got it done, and congrats, you know, kudos to the PLL for seeing it. Um, if you're a fan, like we talked about during the interview, if you're a fan in this area, you have two opportunities to see PLL. You get to see it. You can see a full weekend in uh, Columbus, uh, all the matchups, and to boot, you can catch the All Star Game in Louisville. Do the double. Do the double. Talk to, uh, there's actually some officials up in the booth who were explaining to me some of the calls that we were puzzling at. They, they, uh, they unraveled some of those for me and uh, makes a little bit more sense now that they've been explained. Uh, certainly, you know, 
no crew is perfect, and we don't want to get on in, uh, get on the crew. But sometimes we're wondering what happened, um, and they explain why those calls were made, and it made sense. We've got Ben Pund warming up in goal. He had a good first half, just two goals on him. Some good saves. You know, Castlin didn't have a bad first half in goal for uh, Clay. Just a lot of a lot of good shots taken on him. It looks like he was struggling low a little bit, but anything above his shoulders was an easy save, and that's all you can ask out of your goalie. As long as they're making the ones that they should make, they'll keep you in the game. And if the goalie goes above and beyond and has an excellent game, that's the one position that can single-handedly change the trajectory of the entire matchup. You know, one thing uh, that's a little bit interesting here is uh, Ben and Jack Pund were both either at or headed to Henry Clay. I did and not know that. That would be a massive asset for Henry Clay. That changed during the pandemic. Wow. Uh, Lexington Catholic had, uh, had, uh, was open and had live classes, and they, they wanted to go to live classes and made the move over to Lexington Catholic and have been here since. Um, and still be a good game, but it'd be interesting if you had plus two on the clay side if they were still there. Um, it'd be a different scenario. Uh, probably would still be a dog. <coughs> Excuse me. Would probably still be a dog fight. Absolutely, they're definitely anchoring the Lexington Catholic defense. Ben Pond, the goalkeeper, will be heading to Transylvania next year, looking to compete for time as a freshman. He's definitely one of those goalies that I talked about that could come in and really change the game in favor of his, of his team. He just makes those kind of saves. It's a pretty formidable uh, defense there, not only with ben and, ben and Goal and Jack out there roaming the field. You've got Bennett Williams and Thomas Patton, and then no slouches. Um, also, Alex Castle with the long stick and Egbert. It's a very, very effective defensive uh, alignment out there for, for uh, Catholic. So, coming back, as we said, Henry Clay's two men down. There will be no face-off because Catholic held the ball at the end of the half. Chaz Bowden has the ball, and we're ready to go. Catholic playing four on six right here. They'll definitely look to can a couple of shots. There's Harney with that low shot you talked about that Castling struggled with. Went five hole on him. Yep. Right away they just isolated one part of that man up defense. It looks like it looks like they're doing a five man rotation. Just a quick bang bang and Harney just stepped in. I've seen him hit that shot a million times. So we've had one of the penalties released, one still being served. So Lexington Catholic will go from two men up to one man up. We've got Connor Road taking the face off here against Wyatt Minyard with a long stick. That's typically done to avoid the fast break. Terrell Clark also getting in on it. And it. Ultimately controlled by Catholic, but failure to advance. Catholic is winning the ground ball game here on those loose balls, it can really change the game, how you're doing with it, because it's a free possession to be had. Savalia in to Kaler, back to Savalia. Back to Kaler. Squared up with Tinker. Tinker gives no ground. Now Brooking with the ball. Bennett Williams is not going to come off. Jonah Brooking, that much is clear. You got Thomas Patton on Roland. Savalia with Castle on him. Looks like they're face guarding Trammell up top. So Henry Clay is effectively playing 5v5 offense right now. Look for him to set some picks on ball and off ball to get open. Well, we've still got one in the box. That's right. Good catch, Coach. Williams causing a turnover. Finds Harney. Finds Bowden. Save Castlin. Great save. He gets low there. 
Reynolds with the ball. Finds Harney. St Station. Finds Castle. We missed that call, but it clearly is a multi-minute non-releasable. Ty Warren Gerritsen still in the box. Wes Taylor with the ball. Okay, we're back even. Taylor on up Ladipo. Saved by Castlin, but he can't control it. Bowden, shot, save Castlin. Castlin playing a steady game here. Castlin finds Clark. Looking for Road. Gives it up. Kel Nolan Kelly with the ball. They're playing an even quarter so far. I think Henry Clay should have really settled down that clear instead of throwing the home run pass. Bowden with the hustle play gets the, gets the ball, but it is failure to advance, so his hard work ultimately doesn't work. Harney riding Clark. He went offside there. Offside. Not going to call it. No call. Now he's counting. He's calling it. There it goes. Well done. Not. So, so Harney should pursue and play seven on six. Once the offside's called, there's no reason for him to stay back. Those are the hardest offside calls to make. I'll tell you what, I had a couple of those in college. I know Coach Grass at Swarthmore was ready to tear my head off. Sometimes when you're running down the defender clearing the ball, it's really easy to lose track of where you are on the field and just step over the midfield line. But that is offsides. Coaches, both of us, um, unfortunately, as coaches, we dwell on, on the calls. And we're, we want to call the game, too. That's the way it goes. Absolutely. I was on a Zoom call with two coaches yesterday. And we spent 15 minutes of a call it was supposed to be about other things with coaches talking about different calls that they wanted this season. There's Kaler swinging it out to Brooking. Smith to Kaler to Roland to Brooking. Savalia eyeing up a shot. Even. Great save by Pun there. Beautiful save by Pun. Nice catch, nice uh, catch there by Patton. Patton finds Jack Pun. Look to push. Slows it down. Bowman gets it to station. Lexington Catholic will run offense once again. See if they can continue this run. Nice catch by Harney to Bowden. Here comes Nolan Kelly with the ball to Sanders. Kelly sets the pick. Sanders looks, gives it back to Kelly. Catholic working out of this 1-4-1 set. And that one just got by Kaslin. About a 12 to 14 yard shot, but it was off hip, which is the hardest save in lacrosse to make. Swooping those hands across your body is no easy task. Kelly saw that short stick matchup and was very aggressive. And that's what the 1-4-1 set does. It creates a lot of space up top and lengthens those slides. Got Fom and Minyard back at it. Fom with the clean face-off win. Gets deep. It's going to be a crease violation call. Fom fell into the crease and the ball automatically goes over. Bowman advancing the ball.
Reynolds can't handle it, gets it back. It's a push call going the other way. I didn't, did you see the push? I didn't see the push. It's hard to tell through the crowd of bodies. Yeah. Not sure who it was on. Road to Clark. Looks at Trammell, fakes the pass, and he's going to go. Pund. I think that's going to be a push in the back call. Yeah, that's the hardest spot to make that call when it's right on the back shoulder. I know the Catholic fans didn't like that one. Looked a little marginal. The fans of both teams at the end of every game usually seem to think that their team was mistreated. We could probably do a lot to improve that in our lacrosse it's culture. It's a tale as old as time in lacrosse. Yes, it is. Trammel with the ball. Walks it up. Gives it to Brooking. Roland has it. Spins it to Savalia. Savalia looking for the shot. Roland takes the shot. Doorstep saved by Pund. So Punt stepped out of the cage there, increasing his angle and making that save easier. He's just taking away a window and the goal for the shooter. Punt really seems to have somewhat taken over this game. Every chance that uh, Clay gets, he's snuffing out. Here comes Ryan Station pushing. Drops it to Bowden. Bowden, fancy footwork against Road, gets away. Moves it to Reynolds. Reynolds to Sanders. Sanders moving folks around, wants Harney to pop up. Takes it to X. Calls Wes Taylor down with him to set him a screen. Clark stays on. Station on the dodge. Moves it to Reynolds. Reynolds looking to feed the crease. Station comes up with the loose ball. Takes the shot. They're still running offense. Someone just called for a face mask from the crowd. Road out on station. We got Aiden Smith back playing defense. Not sure how that happened. Lovely setup station for Harney. He just couldn't put it on cage. That was a very well timed cut by Harney. Saw a window in the defense. <laughs> Looks like this clay defense may be getting a little bit worn down by the really high quality offense from Lexington Catholics. Sanders looking. I'd like no, to see Harney. Tarnowski go to his zone here because Castlin's been really strong on the outside making the saves that he should, and it looks like they're having some trouble with their 1v1 matchups. Garretson backs it up and starts the clear. Eyeing up Reynolds, moves the ball to Trammell, can't control it. Bowden scoops it up, knocked down by Garretson, knocked down by Harney. No calls, Just letting him play. Clark with the ball. Aggressive defense from Harney. Harney is a defensive-minded player when he plays for the Commonwealth Kings. And he'll be playing D-mid for Transylvania next fall and spring. It's outstanding that he's able to play attack at this high of a level. Garrettson chasing Taylor. Harney's got it against Clark. Sanders. Iron up Trammell, who's in at the defensive end. Sanders, freehand shot, bouncer, goal. These bounce shots are Caston's Achilles heel. You can see he just opened up his hips, and they're about a 40 mile per hour bouncer. Caston had no chance there, he just totally guessed wrong. I know I want that one back. This is a very long defensive possession there for Clay. Sooner or later, that dam was going to break, and it did. It's a lot to ask. You got. 
Both of the Clay kids headed the same wing, and now King is headed back the other way, and he's there. I can tell this Clay defense is exhausted. I see Clark down there limping. He has his hands full with Josh Harney. Minyard wins another faceoff, putting it down at the Clay defensive end again. Nice catch there by Bowden, pursued by Rode. Moves it to Sanders. More time in the firing line for the Henry Clay defense here. Just what they probably don't need right about now and totally ideal conditions for Lexington Catholic. Sanders taking his time, finds Station. Station eyeing up Ladipo. Scores. They're getting Ladipo on that island yeah. with the short stick. But Deepu had no help there. Station's a very talented downhill dodger. You like to see that long pull hedging his slide early, which means basically creeping towards into his slide so that as soon as you go, it's all or nothing. If ever Henry Clay needed a faceoff win, this is the moment. Definitely. This is where the faceoff game becomes so essential to controlling the tempo in lacrosse. Castle gets it, moves it to Bowman. It's a little chippiness out there. Bowden brings it across the top, moves it to Taylor, to Reynolds, to Kelly, to Bowden, shot. But Bowden just stuck a corner there. That's a really hard save for Castlin to make. Off stick high. Looks like a broken play for the Henry Clay defense. I know they'll want that one back. But just a quick one-two pass play for Catholic. And that'll do it. 11-2 in the third quarter. They've really gone on a big run here. The barrage continues here at Lexington Catholic. We want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor, Apollo Pizza, has been the home of handmade Kentucky pizza for over 40 years with locations in Lexington, Richmond, Northern Madison County, Berea, and coming this fall to Corbin, they have tons of beers, sandwiches, salads, vegetarian items, and famous breadsticks to please everyone. I also want to thank Landrum and Shouse LLP, a law firm with offices in Lexington and Louisville, Kentucky. Smith Nephew, who specializes in robotic knee replacement at the University of Kentucky. We want to thank the David A. Cervoni Foundation for their support of lacrosse today. Their mission is to grow the game in Central Kentucky by building an indoor lacrosse facility. The foundation will be hosting their first Ironman fundraiser tournament this summer. Visit davidcervoni.org to learn more. Red Rover Dumpster, sick of chasing your tail for a fast, easy, flexible way to dispose of waste? Contact Red Rover Dumpster online or by text redroverdumpster.com. Clout Lacrosse is growing the game in Kentucky. Bluegrass Land Title when you close with bluegrass, you're closing with com confidence in Joybox Lexington. Bring joy to someone in your life. Joybox Lexington. Check them out at joyboxlexington.com. The David Cervoni Foundation is something near and dear to the hearts of everyone here at Lexington Catholic. He was just a wonderful kid, gone too soon. Um, and that foundation was started in his memory uh, to, to, to do something meaningful. And uh, we really hope you will... Look at supporting that foundation. Go to davidcervoni.org and uh, show your love. Another face-off win for LexCath. Station drops into the offense, gets the ball. Bowden pursued up high by Luke Vance. Lexcath has a, has a pole still in at offense, although he's backing out now. Great job by Bowden there. We're reading the two slide as he beat the man. He saw the guy coming across the field and found Station, who almost buried that shot. Reynolds dodging 
Dropping it back to Sanders. We've got Trammell in on defense once again. A little, looks a little more rested this time. Last time he was out there, he seemed fatigued. But needed that timeout. We're down under a minute in the third. Sanders with the left-handed shot, saved easily by Kasslin. Needs to get out of there. He's out. Finds Kaler. Castle on the ride. Now Clark has it. Very close. Oh, Castle is relentless and gets the ball back for Lexcath. He is not giving any breathing room. Sort of a soft BTB try there by Harney. I think that was a pass by Harney. Ah. Would have been beautiful right on the pipe. The officials see it the same way. If that was a shot, it was backed up because they are giving it to Henry Clay. They did view that as a pass. Short time. Smith would have been good if it went. Smith's still down on the field. Unfortunately, it's 11-2 after three. Lexington Catholic has taken absolute control of this. Looks like Smith is up, fortunately. Trainers headed for him and the coaches. Where are we at, coach? Can, does Henry Clay have it in him to make another run? It's pretty, pretty, pretty deep hole. Well, it's going to take some extraordinary playing from the specialist positions, goalkeeping and the faceoff guy, Fam. If they can control the possession, at the face-off X and then make some miraculous saves, then they do have a fighting chance. But at this point in the game, those two positions become especially crucial. Fom's a player who's played this season with a heavy heart. Lost his father, Tony, during the offseason to a sort of a sh short duration time with pretty aggressive cancer. He's played miraculously this year. His face-off work has helped lead Henry Clay to the final. I do think he plays with his dad and his heart quite a bit. Fom was, uh, Tony Fom was a big fixture in the Central Kentucky and Lexington lacrosse circles, missed by very many people, uh, including, of course, and acutely his family, who... Uh, we're surprised to see him go. So Grayson has acquitted himself well all season and would have made his dad proud. Got to hand it to Wyatt Minyard. Fom is very effective, but Minyard has done extremely well against him. Yeah, Minyard's had a lot of success going forward against Fam, which has created a lot of fast break opportunities. Fam wins it back there. Trammell will look to pick this one up. It's a rare face-off win here in the second half for the Weary Devils. They may want to slow it up. Oh, they, uh, when you're a coach and you've struggled to get the ball, your heart sinks when you see it get away like that, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, coach, but at 10 goals, it goes to a running clock, right? 12. 12 goals. And once it goes to a running clock, it does not come back. So even if they wow. bring it back under... It stays a running clock. I've been eyeballing that for a while, and uh, not so far. We've got Castle in with the long stick. Don't know that they'll run offense with them in, but we've seen this quite a bit out of Lexington Catholic is that they continue to play, and Connor Road makes them pay for it. That's uncalled for, and that gets a flag. Kids sometimes that gets flagged all the time. The, play, the ball belonged to Henry Clay. You can tell Road was really frustrated with Vance there. That's one of those moments where you just have to keep your cool, accept what happens, whatever the referee blows and calls. You can't change it. They're, they're, they're kids, and the high school boys, as we know, can be fiery at times. I've been very impressed with Road here in this game. He plays very smart defensively, as you can see with his off-ball posture, number five. Clark turns away Harney there. High pass to Kelly, controls it and gets it to Reynolds. 
Fulton Kenny on the defense there of Reynolds. Now we've got Station loose to Sanders. Taking on Garrettson. Another bouncer. Another goal for J.C. Sanders. Yeah, I don't doubt that Coach Dunn is setting the huddle to really try working the ball in front of that goal line, trying to bounce it high. Seems to be really effective on Castlin. Now it's 12 to two, Lex Cath. Number 17's on the wing here right now. Gavin DeLong for Henry Clay. I don't think we've seen him before. Looks like they're getting a little deeper in their bench trying to find some energy. Well done by Rode if he can get away. He can't. Still fighting for it. Picked up by Reynolds. Seems like the loose balls, the the Knights have a little more fight left in them at this point in the game on some a lot of those loose balls. And, and Clay's still fighting for him. It's just appears the pendulum is pretty far in Lexcast's corner in terms of energy. Yeah, it seems like in the second half, Clay hasn't had very many possessions. I wouldn't be surprised if they use a long one on this next time that they get the ball and hopefully can settle it down and give their defense a rest. Kenny working hard against Kelly. Reynolds with the hard lefty shot. Castling gets a save, moves it to Trammell. And now they're just going a one man clear with Trammell. They're not even taking a risk having their poles handle the ball. He's one hard man to stop. Rolling with the ball. I think this is maybe the longest offensive possession in the last 15 minutes from Clay already. We haven't seen the ball at this end of the field in a long time. Yeah, I know Savali these boys are ready to, to play. Brooklyn. Brooking looking for some space. They will not give it to him. Well defensed by the Knights. Brooking fakes the shot going left. Williams is a man to fear with the pole in his hand. Broking is drawing a slide every time. Again, I'd like to see them get some action on the back side and then get one, two over there to push on the weak spot of the defense. Trammel looking for that rollback right and they're ready for it. That pass gets away. Williams headed the other way. Taylor pursued him, but he got it to Bowden. Bowden gets it to Harney. And the Knights are looking to put this thing away. Harney eyeing up King. Station. You got Brooking down there playing defense. Brooking defending Sanders. There is a save for Castlin on a bouncer. Road finding Brooking. Brooking finding Trammell. Trammell to Savalia. To Brooking. And there's Bennett Williams ready for him once again. Le Leland Bain in the game on offense for the Devils. I believe that might be the first time this game. Thomas Patton all over Roland. Rohan Savali got a shorty matchup against Ryan Station. Swims. Lefty shot wide. That was a great move by Savali. Uh, he swum over the defender's stick and came down the alley left-handed. That one almost found the corner. Lexington Catholic with the timeout will be Henry Clay Ball when we come back. I want to thank our sponsors once again. A 
Apollo Pizza is presenting today's live stream, the home of handmade Kentucky pizza for over 40 years. Also, Landrum with Chouse LLP, a law firm, Smith & Nephew, who specialize in robotic knee replacement. The David A. Cervoni Foundation, whose mission is to grow the game in Central Kentucky by building an indoor lacrosse facility. Red Rover Dumpster, for all your residential and commercial dumpster needs. Also, Joy Box of Lexington. Bring some joy to someone in your life. Send them a Joy Box. Joyboxlexington.com. Bluegrass Land Title. When you close with bluegrass, you're closing with confidence. Clout Lacrosse. They're currently building an 11U local travel team. Visit KlausLacrosse.com for more information. KY Lax News is the presenting uh, entity for this game. KY Lax News is on Instagram and Twitter for all the updates you need in boys lacrosse in Kentucky high school. Go to KY Lax News. They are live tweeting this game and some of the scores are on Instagram as well, but most of the live scoring is done on Twitter, so if you don't follow the Twitter and just the Instagram, you're missing something. If you just follow the Twitter, not the Instagram, you're missing all the graphics, videos, pictures, and more there. Savalia on the dodge, loses it, collects it, puns all over him, gets it loose again, and he's away. Got two poles in the offensive end now, Castle and Pund. Reynolds to Harney. Flag is down. Looks like it may be on the sideline. That's my guess at this point, given the look back at the sideline. Yeah, something must have been said there. Nolan Kelly holding the ball up high. He moves it to Wes Taylor, moves it to J.C. Sanders. Sanders carries to X. With Griffin Kaler in pursuit, makes his move left, rolls back. Connor Road meets him, and he gets it to Chaz Bowden, who goes by Kaler, shoots, and that's going to be backed up by Kelly. Great take by Bowden there. He caught them on a bad rotation. He was on an island with his men, went right to left, and just bounced it over the cage. Kelly will start with the ball on the wing. Not sure, maybe Thomas Patton, who I believe is a senior, may have just exited the game. It's very possible that that was his uh, his uh, parting bow for Lexington Catholic, and uh, it's going to be a bow that appears like it will result in another state championship for they're, him. They're taking a picture down there. Must be pretty confident that they've got the game canned away. No, he's still in. I was incorrect. Was Patton not starting the game? He started the game. I thought they were taking him off. I thought they took him off during the stoppage and play. I was wrong. I'm not sure what's going on down there. Was he off getting a picture taken? Uh, yeah, they're posing for the camera at the far end. The Pun Brothers. Family photo. I think if I was up 10 with 5.28 to go, I might be fairly confident as well. Clay have been gamers. They've not quit playing. They're playing very hard, but they just seem to be a little outgunned, outmatched. They had a good run. They were a, a little, bit of a surprise making it this far. J.C. Sanders on the shot. Nice save by Castlin. I think Bowden on that real pretty feed. Just couldn't finish it off. Castlin can definitely hold his head high after this game. I know it's been tough. He's been getting barraged, but he's definitely made some good saves. Pun gets wiped out there by Trammell, no flag. Not saying there should have been a flag, but sometimes there is, whether there should be or not in some of these games. They've mostly let them play this game, which is really a positive for the most part. Road, nice roll away from pressure. 
met by Bowman and weathers is quite a storm and he does not. Bowman gets it, flags down. So we've got one in the box for Clay. We've got one in the box for Catholic. We'll play a little, well, no. The one in the box for Clay's up. He may have just been tired. Don't know. I guess we'll find out when we see how many players are on the field. No, we've got one in the box each. We're gonna play some five on five ball. How does five on five change things? Well, it makes it a little bit easier. It's just a small-sided situation. Easier for the offense? I would say so. With five-on-five, five, the spacing becomes a little bit more intuitive because you can go a box with one guy in the middle. It looks like it's a little go isolation with Trammell here. Jonah Brooking sticks one sidearm. That was a great take by Brooking and a good way to get one back. He just swept across the middle of the field. That was tough for Pun to read. Pun's been great. I don't know too many goalies that could say that. He's also a lefty, and it was about shoulder high off stick side for him. Yep. Is he a lefty? I thought he was a lefty. No, it looks like he's playing with his right hand. Eh. I should know. I've warmed him up so many times. But normally I'm looking right through him. Maybe he is a righty. No, he's a righty. My mistake. He's just a heck of a rip. A little pride saver for the Devils. Keep the game not too far off. No team wants to get beaten on a game that goes running clock. And that's a little bit of a point of pride at, a, at this point for any team. Reynolds had it, they called in the crease. It'll be Henry Clayball. Castlin with it on the restart. He's got Brooking, he didn't see him. And Bennett Williams recognized it very well and took him away. He was only available for a very short time, but Trammell is going to get this clear, take him into the box. And he has a short stick matchup. Brooking looking to work on Williams again. Not that time. Sav oh, they're going to call it in the crease. Savaya chipped it in. Real nice save from Pun. That was a tough call and a good catch by the ref. I didn't see his foot going the crease down there. It must have been before he swatted at it with his stick. Daw hair on the clear. You can see a little bit those uh, football player stick skills. He's not bad, but it's a, not quite as refined as some of these other guys. He is an athlete out there. That Bowden, much is clear. Yeah. He's an imposing figure on the field. Harney up high with the ball. Gets it to Kelly. We're down under three minutes in a nine goal game. Station, moving it to Sanders. We've still got most of the same personnel we've had in all game. Although we've got Brooking playing defense again. Looks like he fell down, stood up, scored Nolan Kelly. Yeah, that was a tough one by the Henry Clay defense. Normally when you get a guy on the ground, you have to be extra careful to not commit a penalty. And there he just stood up and took it into the house. It looked like they let up a little bit to try to make sure they weren't called for anything. And he smartly saw the opportunity and finished it. We've got a 13-3 score with 2.31 to go. We've got Gerritsen and Egbert on this side. We've got Bowman and I think Vance on the, no, Road on the other side. And once again, Fom. Road just couldn't quite corral it. 
Garrettson tries to one hand it. Somewhere, a hundred coaches are yelling two hands. That was a little bit of a late hit there, but Bennett Williams is just an imposing athletic force launching Garrettson. They're looking to feed Minyard. Balls up, balls down. We hope it won't get too chippy here at the end. You don't like to see it. Yeah, especially at the end of the game, that's cheap. But I love that the refs have allowed these boys to play. Lacrosse is a physical, full contact game. And it should be played as such. These kids have played hard. To their credit, there's not been a lot of whining and whinging about calls from the players. They've mostly, you know, they might have said a few words, but they've gone on with it. Wes Taylor with the ball. Gets it to Sanders. Looks like they're going to slow it down. We've got 111 left. There is no shot clock in the high school game, so Lexington Catholic can kill the game here. We'll see if Henry Clay chooses to press out. Sanders looks content. No? Started to say he looked content to hold it, but he's moving. Gets it to Taylor, who moves it to Reynolds. Road headed out toward Bowden. Sanders dealing with Fulton Kenny. It appears that Lexington Catholic would be content to let this one end 13-13. Quite frankly, that's good sportsmanship. There's yeah, really think, no reason for them to tack on anymore. So I think that's the appropriate thing to do here. Uh, shot fake, but I don't think it's shot. We're not going to see a shot take. Harney has it in his stick. This game. And we've got number 51 on. That's your game, folks. The Lexington Catholic Knights are your 2023 CLL state champions. That's two in a row for the Knights. They're celebrating with their student section. The gear is all over the field. They're elated. Their fans are elated. It was a well-won game. It was a really solid performance. The game wasn't close after the first quarter turned to the second. Yeah, I mean, Lexington Catholic just pulled away there. I said before the game, 14-5 is my score prediction after the 17-1 performance in the regular season. Henry Clay had a great early start, but these Lexington Catholic athletes are just on another level for this region. I think they were far and away the best team out there today. They left no doubt they're a deserving champion. They are a resounding champion. The Lexington Catholic Knights are your 2023 champions. I want to thank our sponsors one last time. We don't need to put them on the screen. Let's just watch the players. But... I want to thank Apollo Pizza, our presenting sponsor. I want to thank Landry Michaels LLP. I want to thank Smith Nephew. I want to thank the David Cervoni Foundation, Red Rover Dumpster, Joybox Lexington, Bluegrass Land Title, and Clout Lacrosse. Without all of those sponsors, we would not have this live stream. Now, the game, the sport of lacrosse at the high school level for boys and girls, we've only got one more year unsanctioned. So likelihood is we've only got one more year of the CLL championship. So that may flow from that, that this may be the second to last time we do this. If we are able to put a live stream together next year, we're really excited to do it. We certainly will try to do it again next year. Um, but this is, uh, it's kind of a special thing because even though, you know, everyone wants it sanctioned, these, there's some big moments here in, the, in that time before. Some of the Lexington or the Henry Clay kids are, are disappointed by their loss, which is understandable, but they're going to go get back in that handshake line, and we will see good sportsmanship. They'll get back there and they'll shake hands. It was a hard fought game, a good game, a well respectfully played game, and this is how we end things with respect. It's a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, quite a big roster. Thank you all for joining us for the 2023 Championship Saturday. If you did not see the All-Star Game live stream, it is still at WBON-TV's uh, 
YouTube channel. You also can watch this game back, or if you have a player on one of the teams who wants to see the game at a later time, you can, sh you can watch this game. It will remain up for now until the Internet dies. So you can catch this for as long as you want. We thank you for joining us. I thank Ben Schaefer for being here as our analyst. Uh, we really appreciate his insights. And we look forward to seeing you guys back next year. Ben, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Wes. It was a great time and a great game to watch. Yeah. Again, thank you all for tuning in. We're going to let you go one last time. Congratulations, Lexington Catholic Knights. We forgot one thing. That's what, that's what you get when you, when you get the live stream. We've not named our player of the game. The Apollo Pizza player of the game. We're going to take just a moment to deliberate, and we'll be back with our Apollo Pizza player of the game. Don't go away. Sorry for the false ending. We'll be right back. Take long. Our Apollo Pizza player of the game, senior goalie, Ben Pund. He let in three goals, and that's it. He was a deciding factor there. He was a decisive factor. What did you see out there, Coach? Yeah, goalkeepers always have the ability to impact a game in a big way, and Pun made all the saves that he was supposed to make, and even some extra ones that were maybe tough and could have kept Henry Clay in the game more than that 10-goal margin reflected on the scoreboard. So congratulations to Ben. I know he'll have a great career at Transylvania for the next four years, just as he had a great one at Lexington Catholic. I want to apologize right now for all the times I may have called Ben Jack and Jack Ben during the broadcast to the Pun family. I do my best to keep those straight, but I'm sure I did it at least once, if not more. Uh, and to any other player that I misnamed, but congratulations. Ben Pund, our Apollo Pizza CLL Championship game, player of the game. And once again, congratulations, Lexington Catholic Knights. See you next year, folks.